I'm so glad we've got tomorrow afternoon too because I'm not getting near through what I wanted to get through on herbs. <laughs> There's a lot of herbs and I'm just going to be targeting basically the herbs that, that we, we use. You've probably seen there's books and books and books on herbs. Yes. So let's look at burns. We've looked at aloe, but what if you don't have aloe? Well, there's something else you can use, and this is very simple and it's very effective, and it's saturated Epsom salts solution. Epsom salts is magnesium sulfate, and how you make the saturated Epsom salt solution is you have a jar of water and you put a teaspoon of Epsom salts in, it'll dissolve. Then you put another teaspoon, it'll dissolve. You keep doing that until you can't dissolve it anymore. You now have a solution of saturated Epsom salts. And what you do for a burn, um, you soak a cloth in it, keep it quite moist and wrap it on the burn area. Wrap it with um, a cling wrap and then bandage that on. Uh, it's that simple. So my daughter Emma, she was sitting down ironing. She's the one with all the children. And, she, and there was a loud cry, one of the children, and the iron dropped and went on her thigh. And she had the holes from the steam on her, on her thigh. And she's in Wisconsin, so, you know, she might have a little aloe plant, but not much. So she did the saturated Epsom salts. She soaked it in cloths and just laid it over the area. And she said she had about four thicknesses of cloth, so it was quite wet. And then she, she put the plastic wrap over that and she um, bandaged it and she said that her that took her pain away from you know well, when you get burned you got 10 out of 10 pain that's excruciating pain but she said she brought it down to about a five which was bearable and by the time she went to bed that night it was um, you know only about a one out of 10. Now you look at her thigh now, there's a little tiny bit of a white mark there and yet that's steam, that's one of the worst burns. So the saturated Epsom salts is, a, is an excellent uh, remedy for burns. Also, one lady told me that she has a jar of it in her fridge. She just has a jar there and of course it'll just about keep forever. So she said, I've got children, and if there's a burn, she said, I've got it there quickly. Also, I have heard, and I haven't done this because I'm, you know, I really like the Epsom salts or the aloe, is grated potato. Now, you probably realise too that um, when someone's had a burn, that area is so incredibly tender. Whereas the aloe is very soothing and the very wet, cool cloths of the Epsom salts are also very cooling. But grated potato, you can have the little, little bits from the grate. That's why it's good to grate it very tiny. But I've had people say that the grated potato made a huge difference. Directly on? Yeah, you just about would put it directly on. But you'd have to cover that in plastic See, the worry is that if the edges dry out, so that when you change it, it, it can lift the edges. And of course, it's just applying cold water, just keeping it in cold water, but you can't always keep the area in cold water, can you? Yeah? Well, Cross mentioned um, this grated potato, and he said that every time it starts to heat up again, then you have to change the potato pelters. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, <coughs> that's certainly, because when it heats, when it heats up, it's um, then of course the burn, the burn had, is coming back. I had a <coughs> burn. I didn't have any aloe vera, so I took egg white, and that oh, was really? that was really good. Yeah. Yes, I have heard that. Mm -hmm. And when you think about it, egg white's almost the same consistency mm -hmm. of uh, of the gel of the mm -hmm. of the aloe plant. Mm -hmm. So what I'd like to look now is heart. And there are some ex excellent uh, herbs for the heart. Now, yesterday we looked at cane pepper. Now, do you remember what cane pepper does? Cane pepper 
It thins the blood. Cayenne pepper also opens the capillaries. And that's important because when someone has a stroke, heart disease, the arteries are usually a lot narrower because of the build-up. But it also strengthens the arterial wall. And this is an important point because when someone sustained damage to the arterial wall over many years, you get a little bit of scar tissue build up there. And so what the cane pepper does, it strengthens and brings a suppleness to that arterial wall. It's a remarkable herb. So for the heart, the cane pepper. Now before I move on to the heart, I want to go through a couple more things with cane pepper. So cane pepper even though when it goes into the blood, it thins the blood and opens the capillaries, if there's any bleeding, it'll constrict the blood vessels. So we've had people with cuts. In fact, I had a Fijian doctor come and work with us for a few weeks. And I was lecturing. She was in the kitchen and she, like most Fijians, had bare feet. <laughs> and someone dropped the blender. Now you know the blender, very thick glass, and a couple of bits went on her foot. And my dear friend is quite well padded, <laughs> so she doesn't have a skinny foot like mine. There was a fair bit of um, subcutaneous tissue on her foot. And I could see the staff going, because I was lecturing. So I took a break and she was out the back and she had uh, two quite severe cuts on the top of her foot. And I could see they were very deep and they looked almost a centimetre deep and a centimetre wide and I could see the fat globules, so it's quite deep. So I ran inside, got the cane pepper and sprinkled the cane pepper into the wound. She started laughing, she said, I can't believe what you're doing. <laughs> Doesn't it hurt? Well, it's already hurting, you know, and, and the cane pepper, remember we talked about it yesterday, has an analgesic effect. It can actually, it might be an initial, I like to say tingle, some people like to say burn, but it, uh, it, it sort of calms it down. And she just shook her head and she was laughing. Now, this was in our wild retreat, which was two hours from town. So... We just put the cane pepper in and, and we bound it up. And she just kept shaking her head and laughing. She said, I can't believe what you've done to me. So the next day when she changed the dressing, we left it again about 24 hours, she found that the wound was starting to close. She said to me, as a doctor, she said, I would have stitched that. But she said, I'm out here and I'm here to learn off you. So I thought, well, let's just see what Barbara will do. <laughs> and that, that wound came together as if it had been stitched. Mm -hmm. She said, I, I just can't believe it. She said, I've never seen anything like it. So the cayenne pepper is remarkable in so many ways. So even though it'll open the capillaries, it'll thin the blood when you take it internally and it gets into the blood, if it comes anywhere in the blood and it sees bleeding, it'll constrict those capillaries and stop the bleeding. So the only way I can explain this is to give you Psalm 104 verse 14, where the Bible says that God gave herbs for the service of man. So if, if you need dilation, it'll dilate. And if you need constriction, it'll, it'll constrict. It only constricts where there's bleeding. Yes? Does it variate in quality or freshness if it's been opened and sealed? Well, ideally, you want cane pepper that's bright orange. I'm always a bit concerned when it's gone a bit brown. So you want the freshest you can get. I, you know, we get our cane pepper from, um, from the herb wholesalers. So if you can get it from a herd shop and it's a lot more vibrant, it is a lot more potent. That's true. But remember, yesterday we talked about... Uh, charcoal and the activated charcoal and I said well, activated charcoal is great but we just used to get it out of the fireplace. Mm -hmm. It's 
a bit hard to pulverise up and it can be a bit lumpy, but it does the same thing. But we're civilised now. We, we buy activated charcoal. But can't you grow your own cayenne pepper? You can. You can. And you can grow your own cayenne pepper and you can certainly dry it in the dehydrator and, and blend it up. That's true. But it's like at Misty Mountain, we have so much turmeric. So much turmeric. And someone said to us, why don't you dig it up and, and dry it and, you know, have your own turmeric? And I said, have you got the time? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know we're all so busy? <laughs> and that's what you'll find, we're all so busy. So we just, we just dig it up if we need it. So cane pepper can constrict whenever there's bleeding. And this is why... The cayenne pepper can be helpful with glaucoma because it can relieve the pressure in the eye. So I gave you earlier a tea which is golden seal and eye bright for the eye. So when you make that tea, you could put just the slightest pinch of cayenne pepper in. And of course, if it's too hot, water it down a little bit. But for the brave and fearless amongst us, you can try just a pinch of cayenne pepper in with your glaucoma eye tea. So we've looked at cayenne pepper internally, we've looked at cayenne pepper to constrict bleeding, we also looked at cayenne pepper yesterday as compresses to, to warm up cold feet, to bring blood to any area where there has a numbing effect. So the other herb for, uh, and by the way how much I say to people with wanting to have this effect because of heart problems, a quarter of a teaspoon three times daily in a little bit of water. Just dip it. Yeah. Mm. Just throw it, actually just throw it down. So last week when my back was incredibly painful, remember I woke up in the middle of the night and I could not get any comfortable position, so I went down to the kitchen and I grated the ginger, but before I started grating the ginger, I put half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper in a little bit of water and I threw it down because I was using it there to have an analgesic effect. It tingles, but it settles. <laughs> it doesn't tingle for long. But probably the number one herb for the heart is the hawthorn berry. So where I was in Manchester last week, there's just hedges and hedges of hawthorn berry. Where I was staying, there's lots of canals. I uh, Always, wherever I stay, I explore thoroughly the area on my morning walk every day. <laughs> In Scotland, I think I surveyed most of the whole area just by my morning walk. So when I was in Manchester last week, uh, there's lots of hedges that are hawthorn berry. Now in the hawthorn berry, the active components that affect the heart are found in the leaf, in the berry, and in the bark. But most commonly, you buy the berry. You buy the dried berry. So when you make the, and this is what we do, we get the dried berry. We also have, see a lot of hawthorn berries grown down the bottom of Australia. Remember with Australia, the further down you go, the colder it gets. And I think, you know, 150 years ago, they bought the hawthorn berry head for hedges down in Victoria. So it does grow a lot down there. So we've got a friend that gathers a lot of berries and dries them for us. So this is two teaspoons. Remember I said the rule of thumb is one teaspoon to one cup of water? So with the hawthorn berry, you make it a little stronger and then the person doesn't have to drink quite as much hawthorn berry tea. <laughs> And we advise approximately one litre a day. <coughs> what does the hawthorn berry do? The hawthorn berry regulates the heartbeat. So if someone got, has got heart arrhythmia, the hawthorn berry can help with that. We also make the hawthorn berry as a uh, tincture. So to make it as a tincture, you make it very strong. And we find that um, it's very handy to have the tincture, especially when someone 
blood pressure is high because they're stressed out, sipping on that hawthorn berry tincture has an effect. It's a very, very safe herb. You can even use it in conjunction if the person's still on blood pressure medication, not a problem at all. There's no contraindications with the hawthorn berry. So with the tincture, I um, and, and it's a berry, so do you pour boiling water on it or, or do you boil it, students? Cool. Yes, you do. Gentle simmer, 10 minutes. 10 minutes simmer. Because remember, the three things, what are the three things you <coughs> simmer? The roots, uh, the, berries, roots the, the berries bark. and the bark. The roots, the berries and the bark have to have a simmer. 10 minutes simmer. Uh, was it, uh, should we uh, grind it the, uh, the berries? Uh, we don't. You could. You could, you probably get it a little bit stronger then. But with the tincture, what I do is I do two cups of uh, hawthorn berry and three cups of water. And I do a gentle simmer and I get an incredibly strong dark tea. And then I'll, I'll put it with equal amounts. Once it's cool, make sure it's cool strain it and then you put equal equal uh, glycerin and there's your tincture. You don't have to use alcohol then? Like if it's no. burned down or cooked so it's not so strong. Mm -hmm. So that and if you have it as a tincture it's one teaspoon three times a day. Should be, what you say, the same amount as, as the mm -hmm. Pardon? So once you've strained that, you put in equal glycerin. Mm -hmm. The hawthorn berry equalizes the heart rate. If the blood pressure is too high, it'll bring it down. If it's too low, it'll bring it up. Remember Psalm 104 verse 14 that God gave herbs for the service of man. You see what the herbs do, they work with the body. So a lady contacted me recently and she said, Barbara, I'm very worried about the hawthorn berry. She said, because I was on medication and she said, if I didn't take it, she said, I'd go really high, I'm, I'm just worried and I said, you don't have to worry about the hawthorn berry because it works with your body. Now, we had a guy recently who had a stroke. He was with us. He was actually Dave Babongi's twin brother. Remember Dave that had the burnt leg? Aboriginal guy. And he came to us, oh, about two years ago now. And he just had a stroke. He was quite large. He was on a lot of medication. He was on statin drugs for for uh, cholesterol, he was on blood thinning medication, he was on two different types of blood pressure. And he did our program and he learned about the eight laws of health. And little by little his weight came down. And I said to him, I can't tell you what to do with your medication, Dan. So it's Dave and Dan. But I said, if I were you, I'd stop the cholesterol lowering medication and the blood thinning medication. I said, you can take the cane pepper Whereas the cholesterol lowering medication, as long as you keep these laws, these true remedies, you don't need to be on that medication. And he was taking the hawthorn berry. He went back home for about eight months and when he came back, he was this trim, muscular guy. He's in his 50s, he looked fantastic. I said, wow, Dan. He said, I'm doing exactly what you say. <laughs> exactly. Now, do you remember what I said? People say, how long will it take? I say, well, it all depends on how serious the condition is and how serious you are at implementing this. He said, I'd like to do another program. I said, sure. He did the program. He was still on one blood pressure medication. We took his blood pressure and his blood pressure was 100 over 55. I said, Dan, your blood pressure is getting too low. I said, have you considered stopping 
your medication? He said, I can't. He said, the doctor says I will die if I don't take it. I said, I said Dan, this may have been the case <laughs> two years ago when you just had your stroke and you were this big and drinking and smoking and eating badly. But I said, look at you now. I said, your blood pressure's going too low. I said, why don't you stop? We're here. We'll monitor you every day. We're watching you very closely. He said, okay. I took his blood pressure two days later, 120 over 70. I said, your blood pressure's perfect, Dan. Oh, he was very, very happy. Now, he went back for his yearly examination because the doctor had de deemed him not fit for work. <laughs> so he went back to have his ass assessment and the doctor said, there's nothing wrong with you, you're going back to work. <laughs> <laughs> it was an incredible story. In fact... Um, in Australia, we've got a Seventh-day Adventist magazine and it's called uh, Signs of the Times. Well, they did a whole story on him. It was just such, such an incredible story. But Dan did exactly what, what we said to do and he got incredible results. He thought that, you know, he, he would never be able to work again. But it also shows you how the drugs will take your blood pressure down whether you need it or not. Whereas the hawthorn berry will work with the needs of your body. Same with the cayenne pepper. If you take too much blood thinner, you can bleed, you know. You, you know. One man said to me, my nose is bleeding. I said, you're on too much blood thinner. So if you start the cayenne pepper while you're on a blood thinner, it really has to be monitored. But you can take a bucket of cayenne pepper a day and you will never bleed from the nose because the herbs work with the needs of your body. That's the beauty of it. Yes? Is there any problem in using cayenne pepper and hawthornberry in combination with each other or at the same time? We adv advocate that you do okay. because they do slightly different things. So what the hawthornberry does is it tones and strengthens the heart. So for heart arrhythmia, it tones and strengthens that and it can get that heart rate back onto a, a better, better beat. But then you have to look at why the person has heart arrhythmia or a you know, dysfunctional heart rate. And there are two common reasons for that. In one is caffeine. Caffeine will certainly do that. And so will uh, wheat. If someone has an allergy to wheat, it can disrupt the heart rate. Because remember, the wheat's been changed. The other thing we use with heart is magnesium. So why do we use magnesium? Because magnesium is a muscle relaxant. The heart is a muscle. And magnesium relaxes the heart at rest. And the heart at, heart at rest is the, is the bottom reading of the blood pressure. That's what... You know, if you're high when your heart is at rest, you know, that's when it's getting a concern. But, you know, it's interesting. I was at the health retreat in Alabama and one of the staff said to me, Barbara, this Spanish lady, you know, she was about 40, vibrant, fit, the most luxuriant hair. Her blood pressure was something like, I don't know, uh, 160 on 95. So I said to her, is your blood pressure usually that high? She said, it's always that high. Don't bother me. <laughs> so the staff said, what will we do? And I said, don't bother her. <laughs> <laughs> so we just left it as is. And I guess there are variations in blood pressure. We had one lady. She said to me, Barbara... I took my blood pressure at 5.30 this morning and it was this and I took my blood pressure at 10 in the morning. What will I do? I said, stop taking your blood pressure. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard of white coat blood pressure? <laughs> the person's running for their doctor's appointment. They go into the room, sit down and they see that white coat and up goes the blood pressure. <laughs> It does exist, that is true. Some people just get stressed out even being, being in, the, in there. Yeah, that, that, is, that is true. 
So what I'd also uh, like to look at is uh, herbs for hormones. So we talked a bit yesterday about the wild yam, that Mexican wild yam, and that's best used as a cream. And the, the second ingredient in the Anna's wild yam cream is Vitex, which is chaseberry. So chaseberry is very good at uh, helping to balance the hormones. And Dong Kwai. Dong Kwai is a root, and of course chaseberry is a berry. But to be able to take them in a concentrated form, uh, tablet form is the best. So I've had people come to me on HRT, hormone replacement therapy. They say, can we take the Anna's Wild Yam Cream while we're on the, on the uh, hormone replacement therapy? And I said, no, you can't. One has to stop and start the other. And they're on the Anna's Yam Cream. They're implementing the laws. And they get back to me after two months and they say, look, oh, I need more help. It's not kicking in fast enough. So then I suggest they get a supplement of Dong Kwai and take that as well. And they get back to me a month later and say, thank you, it's, it's doing it. Sometimes people need a little bit more help <coughs> initially. She probably find two months on the Dong Kwai and by then the Anna's cream has done a little bit more and they can, they can often stop that. Remember, you're the guide there. Just watch and see the body's response. Some people have found that uh, maca has helped. Maca is a relative of uh, the wild yam, yeah, you can get maca powder and evening primrose oil. Evening primrose oil, I've had some ladies tell me that this has helped a lot. So some women have found implementing those laws and just taking chase cherry has been enough to bring relief from hormonal problems. Some people have found Dong Kwai, probably get more feedback from Dong, Fa, Dong Kwai than any other herb. Well, the most feedback I get is the Anna's Yam Cream, but not everyone can afford it and not everyone can access. So my, my friend in Fiji, my doctor friend, do you know what they call her now? The nutritional doctor. <laughs> and she says, I get many young women from up in the interior that come down to me in Fiji who've got hormonal problems. She said they cannot afford the Anna Yam cream, it's too hard to get. So she said, I give them green drinks. She gives it to them three times a day. She said if they live in a town they can buy and afford it, they can buy the green barley powder. But she said if they live up in the villages, I get them just to pulverise the green leaves with water and strain it and drink the water and she said we're getting results. And the reason for that is the chlorophyll, the chlorophyll from the, from the green plants is a very effective blood cleanser. And that seems to have, a, have an effect, she said, to just help balance out the hormones. See, what you, what you have to do is work with what, what you've got. So I was up in the interior in Papua New Guinea a few years ago. My host was taking me around and showing me some of the little villages. We went up into some villages where there's no running water and there is uh, no electricity. And I could not speak the language, but I had an interpreter with me. And they were showing me around, showing me around. and outside the back of every house, there's, there's the kitchen and, of course, it's a fire. And I saw a man with his hand bandaged up. And I said, ah, what's happened to the hand? They said he had a hunting accident where a knife went through the bottom of his thumb and almost came out the other side. And I said, can I have a look? And he showed me and it was red and swollen. And I could see by the look on his face it was very painful. So what I did was I got two bowls, two bowls, and, I, and on the fire there was hot water. 
So we put cold water in and put enough hot in to make it a warm temperature and he put his hand in. Now there was no ice, there's no electricity, so I just had cold water. Now over, over in the middle of the village there was a pipe coming out of the ground that you could get water out and it was quite cold. So I put his hand in hot water. By now we've got a gathering of about 30 people all looking to see what this white woman is going to do with this guy's hand and he's frowning at me and looking around because it hurt a little bit but he could handle it after a while. How, how long did I have it in the hot water? Three minutes. Three minutes and then put it in the cold for 30 seconds and then we got the kettle and made the hot water a little bit hotter and then back into the into the hot and then I asked someone to empty that out and get fresh cold because the hot hand is heating up the water, you haven't got ice. By the end of the second hot this man started to smile. I, could, I saw his body relax and we did that how many times? Three, Three times and by the end of it he's just like this and all the people are nodding and smiling and then I said does anyone know a green healing plant that grows in the bush? And someone said, yeah. I said, well, go, go and get it for me. So they ran into the bush and got these green, I don't know what they were. And what I did was I just crushed them up between my hands. Sometimes I chew them. And then I put them, put them on, on his hand. And I said, has anyone got a bandage? Someone had a bandage and we bandaged it up. And I said, now we're going to pray. And we prayed that God would bless it. And everyone bowed their head. <laughs> For the rest of the day, this man is just behind me. <laughs> of course, I couldn't understand. I didn't know what was happening. But body language told me I think his pain levels went down about easily by half, perhaps more. What was the green plan? I don't know, but I just know it was chlorophyll. And it's a wonderful cleanser and healer. Do I have to tell them what to do now? No. If it gets sore, what does he do? He, he experienced what it did. Experienced what it did. Now, what would have happened if I hadn't gone there that day? They're poor. They can't get to town. How big would it have got? How painful would it have got before finally got to hospital? Would he have lost his hand? Etc. 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 Such simple things. That's why there's such a need out there, hey? and not just a need up in the underdeveloped areas, but there's a need in the finest houses in the town. Isn't that true? And that's what I find with the health retreats. We get some very wealthy guests there. And if you would knock on their door, they'd probably slam the door in your face. But they're actually coming into your house. <laughs> they're coming into your house and, and you're teaching them because many people are frustrated and, and sick of the, of the drugs. Isn't that true? Because it's, it's not working anymore. So there's some herbs that you can do. And even if you get into um, primitive areas where people don't have a lot of money, there's always something that you can do. And remember that where God says, I will hold thine hand, I will keep thee. And in Psalm 32, 32 verse 8, the Bible says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way that thou shalt go. He says, I will, I will guide thee with mine eye. I just thought of one area for aloe vera, just came to my mind. One more thing you can do with aloe vera, and that is to make suppositories. So how do you make a suppository with aloe vera? You cut the flesh the size of your little finger. So you thinly slice at one side, you know, get a nice thick leaf, and then you freeze that. And people can use that for, uh, for hemorrhoids internal hemorrhoids and external hemorrhoids. How do they know if they've got internal hemorrhoids when they do a bowel movement and there's red blood there? Red blood means there's just bleeding near the opening. And of course, external hemorrhoids, they really know that is there. 
And we also talked about the sitz baths. Hot and cold is very good for that. And there's, there's another one, so the suppository. In fact, we've, we've got a section in our freezer where we've got, we've got a whole lot of them. And another suppository is our castor oil. But castor oil takes three days to freeze. And what you do, you moisten a cotton ball with it and mould it to like your little finger. And remember, three days to freeze. And it must, of course, be inserted frozen. That can also help a lot with hemorrhoids. What about skin? What about eczema, psoriasis? What can you put on the skin? Do you know there's not much? Because eczema and psoriasis are from internal. And the skin is the last section out. <laughs> Eczema or psoriasis is, a, is an effort of nature to free the system from conditions that arise because of a violation of the laws of health. So one of the laws of health that's violated can even be exposure to mould, so not, not fresh air. Mould can be a factor. We had a guy come from Saudi Arabia who had very severe uh, psoriasis. The back of his neck was like crocodile skin. He was 40. Now he had improved because he found a, he found a website and it was called Cortisone Induced Eczema. And he'd been applying cortisone for 20 years and he had what they called Cortisone Induced Eczema. It got to the point where the cortisone was basically causing it. And apparently a German doctor resides over this site and he says, you just got to stop the cortisone. You've just got to stop it. You're going to go through she hell for about three months. Just live in a bath. <laughs> and people that do have uh, skin problems, very itchy, they often find a bath with a, a bag of oats in it and squeeze the oat water in. That can be, that can be relieving. And, uh, and there's a pine substance that you can buy and put in a bath and that apparently can be relieving. So when he came to us, he'd gone through the worst. He had a few little red itchy bits on his arms. The back of his neck was quite bad. He ate a lot of peanuts, a lot of wheat, <laughs> a lot of oats, a lot of refined sugar. So we advised him on that. We don't serve any of that at our health retreat. At the end of two weeks, and he had the steams every night, he really enjoyed the steams. Diving in the cold water, back from there. He felt so good. He was there with his wife. They were Malaysian. At the end of the two weeks, he said, we're a little disappointed that you know, it, it has not improved very much. And I smiled, I said, you know, it takes two months to get the residue of those allergens out of the body. So you've got to give it two months, even though you haven't had any. And how many people stop them and after a month they say, well, it's not doing anything. They haven't given it enough time. Where's our time factor? It can take at least two months before the residue of those foods are out of the body. So he went home and we got an email six weeks later. What's that? Exactly two months? Mm -hmm. All gone. All gone. <laughs> His wife did tell me in Saudi Arabia they have these big housing um, developments for the staff that are out on the oil rigs in Saudi Arabia. And she said, they all have hair, air conditioning, of course, but she said in some roofs there's mould. And she said, our air conditioner, the filter's supposed to be changed every three months. She said, within two days, there's black building up just on the filter. So I think there was a mould factor with him as well. And they certainly addressed that and were able to fix that. So he came back exactly a year later and his skin was like mine. They were just smiling the whole time. He said, my specialist said I'd never be free of this. 
the two months, is that just a reference of experience? or? That's right, or yeah. For allergens in general? Yeah. Mainly those foods. I've seen, you know, it's like this guy, exactly two months. <laughs> it was exactly two months. Now, it's not always exactly too much. That's why I say at least two months. Hopefully, by two months, most people are starting to get a response. If it's not totally gone, as long as it's improved. And it can be ten, depend on many things, you know. If the people are still having late nights, if they're still having their coffee, if they're not exercising, it, you know, it, it will not be as quick. Yeah. So you just said get rid of the allergies because yeah. you thought that could be a part why he has psoriasis. I find that in every skin disease, in every skin disease, there's a factor that plays a part. The allergies. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I've seen it in babies' eczema. That's why we get the mother to stop those foods. I saw it in this guy. My son-in-law had very bad eczema. He had it as a child, and he found that when he stopped the allergens, he could keep it under control, but he found that he could get away with oats. So he kept it under control and then he went up to Queensland and did a massage course and he got into a cheap house. I think it was $10 a week and five young guys were in it. The house was about to be demolished. It was full of mould. And because they're up in Queensland, they were getting boxes of bananas cheap, so he was eating heaps of bananas. Bananas, very high sugar. So with his exposure to the mould and the high sugar diet he was in the bananas, the, the eczema just really got out of control. He left there and it settled right down again about that time he married my daughter. And everything was fairly under control and then they went to Tasmania and he liked Tasmania because it's cold, because in the hot environment the eczema was worse. And he became an architect, a builder, and the problem is that sometimes people don't pay their bills. And he's got a wife and three little children, so stress, when he'd have high stress, <sighs> the eczema would come bad again. And he read the book um, Gut and Psychology by Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride. And she suggests stopping all grain. So he stopped all grain. He didn't even eat buckwheat or quinoa, he stopped all grain. So what did he eat? He ate legumes, vegetables, nuts and seeds. And he came and stayed at my place for a little while doing some building work for us at that time. <coughs> and he used to make a great big soup every day and he didn't do the nightshades either. The nightshades are the tomatoes, eggplant, capsicum and white potato. So I made this soup of sweet potato and beetroot and carrot and celery and Can you green just beans. Why they're, often a problem? they're often a problem because they are high in lectins. And we'll talk about lectins in more detail when we talk about the acid alkaline balance, when we talk about food. But lectins getting into the blood can cause inflammation. So he stopped all that. So for breakfast, he'd have a bowl of soup, this soup he'd cook up every day. And he would have a bowl of, say, lentils, because I cooked the lentils in the morning. And then he'd walk out the door with a carrot and a handful of macadamia nuts, about 10. For lunch, he'd have another bowl of soup. <laughs> and then he'd have what I'd made, which is salad, you know, very similar to what we had today. And at night, he'd have another bowl of soup. Do you know, he trimmed right down, lost excess fat, but he was still muscly, and his eczema totally cleared. Totally cleared. In fact, he couldn't believe it. And he was told he'd never be free of it. He said he can remember as a 10-year-old boy scratching his legs till they bled. And he could hear his mother and father fighting. The mother said, no cortisone. The father said, we've got to do something. Look at him. And he said, if dad won, I'd get the cortisone and it'd all settle down. <laughs> but if mum won... <laughs> So what can you do when it's really itchy? Ice. Ice. Kill the itch with ice. Just ice it. You can try aloe vera, but you know what I find? As soon as anything you put on the skin heats up, it irritates it. 
And remember, it's coming from the inside. You can try aloe vera, you can try coconut oil, but most people find they're better just to leave the skin if it gets too dry, a bit of coconut oil. But it's usually within two months. And if it's very severe, you can do what Matthew did <laughs> and go grain free. He's not grain free now. In fact, I think he did it for six months. Just totally grain free. He ate legumes twice a day. He ate a lot of vegetables. He ate seeds and nuts. He didn't lose his muscle because he was having adequate legumes, but he conquered it. In fact, he says it's the best thing he ever did. Now, let's say a year later, a bit of stress comes and maybe he's eating some of the things he shouldn't and the eczema comes back. What does he do? He knows exactly what to do. And that's the beauty of it when you start treating naturally and you see your body's response that it, it's teaching it. And never ask, underestimate the value of ice. Ice is phenomenal. So our time is almost up. Sleep. How do we get people to sleep? I'm going to be giving a whole presentation on sleep. But there are some herbs that can help with sleep. So we have a tincture that we make and it's passion flower. Passion flower soothes the passions. I think that's why they call it passion flower. And of course that's a flower. Skullcap. Skullcap is a dried herb. St John's wort. St John's wort is also a dried herb. Leaf and flower, that's flower. I think that's leaf. And we call this mix our relax herbs. These all are mild tranquilizers, mild sedatives. So if someone's coming off uh, alcohol, We've had people come off methamphetamines, we've had people come off marijuana, methadone. We even had a champagne alcoholic do our program. Lots of smokers coming off smoke, smoke. We give them that three times a day and I make it in a tincture form the way that I uh, described before. And the beauty of the tincture form is they can have a spoonful. Even every half hour, well rarely do they have to do that. St. John's wort is a nerve nourisher, so it nourishes the nerves. And when people are coming off these stimulants, their nerves are on edge. And at night, we put in a stronger tranquilizer sedative, and it's valerian. And so we put these three together. They're out, we call them our relax herbs. And then when we add that, we call that our sleepy herbs. You can buy them in a tablet form, you can buy them in a capsule form. So that's number one. Another one, number two, some people find that melatonin helps. And as you'll see when I talk about sleep, it's a naturally occurring hormone from the, um, from the pineal gland. Some people find that magnesium puts them to sleep. It's a muscle relaxant, so it can certainly relax to put, to put people to sleep. But looking at herbs, they're, they're probably the main herbs. I have had ladies find that when they go on the Anna's Wild Yam Cream, they start sleeping better. Much depends on why they can't sleep, when it all started, the different factors that are coming together. <coughs> and I'll be looking at that in more detail when we look at sleep, but basically they're the herbs. For some people, this has a great effect. For some people, it hardly makes any difference, so you, you try the different things. So 
Chamomile. Pardon? Chamomile. Yes, chamomile. Chamomile is a mild tranquilizer. It's probably a little milder than those, but some people find just the chamomile tea helps. So if someone's very stressed out, we find that this sleepy, sorry, the relaxed herbs can make a big difference. And sometimes if a person's really stressed out, we just give them a hot foot bath. This is a straight hot foot bath, not hot and cold, just feed in hot water for maybe 20 minutes. Yeah? I know that uh, Ellen White was negative towards uh, cinnamon, but banana and cinnamon works really well also for sleep. Well, banana stimulates melatonin stimulates banana. banana stimulates the re release of melatonin that's why it's a great evening meal for the children <laughs> but if someone has uh, diabetes or conquering cancer the banana is not the best because it's very high sweet doesn't it have magnesium in it as well the banana yes it does it does Sometimes just a hot foot bath is enough to relax a person if they're stressed or can't sleep. The hydrotherapist's first rule is warm the feet. Yeah? The wild yam cream, couldn't that be made yourself if you have wild yam? If you can get that wild yam, which is almost impossible. So I think we'll uh, call it a day, unless anyone has any questions. Yes? I have one more question, but that concerns, uh, I mean, you have a lot of experience and uh, that has built up to, to what you present here. But uh, somewhere you started and uh, how did you start? Was that with literature or was that with uh, people around you and advice and, and trial and error? or and, and what would you advise us? So how I started was with the need around me. Mm -hmm. And that really started with my children. Mm -hmm. when, when things arose and I had books. I had, I had Back to Eden, Jethro Kloss. I had uh, the Herb book by John Lust. And I also had a book by Vance Farrell, which, is a combina which was a combination of the Ministry of Healing in the front and some of... Kellogg's Simple Water Cures in the back. So that's really what I started with. But where I started with was where the need was. And, uh, and Vance Farrell, he's uh, done a, an encyclopedia. Yeah, he's called an Encyclopedia of Natural was Remedies. I didn't have that, oh, okay. but that's, that's quite a good book and a lot of people find that very, very helpful to go to that. It's like a reference book. Um, at the moment, my second book is in at the editors, and it's been proofread, so it's at the graphic designers at the moment, and it's a book on natural remedies. So I've, I basically go from the head through all the body systems, and, and I've put everything in a nutshell. <clears throat> and what I aimed for that was just a simple handbook, just it won't be any bigger than, the, than the, my self heal by design. So it's a simple book that, uh, that gives a basic, probably not as in detail. I'm giving you a huge amount of detail this week, but just simple things that people can do. You must send us an email when, when it's Yes, uh, yes, I will. I will. We might be able to <coughs> send you. And Yes, a friend just contacted me and said they've just finished translating my book into Italian. And they asked for our graphic designer to send the pictures, so they're going to start printing that in Italy.